If you want to memorize all the Pathfinder 2e conditions, it can seem like a huge task. The secret is that you don't need to memorize all the conditions. That's because some conditions are much more common than other rare conditions, and some conditions are just much easier to remember than other conditions. You can work through them based on how much you play. There's a few conditions I'm not going to talk about, because that's best explained in its own video. The first conditions are not conditions at all, but mechanics. That's the flat check, and circumstance penalties and bonuses, and status penalties and bonuses. In Pathfinder, every time you do a difficult task, you're gonna roll a d20 and try to meet or exceed a dc. But oftentimes, these modifiers are dynamic, and they can be sorted into circumstance and status modifiers. Circumstance modifiers encapsulate anything that has to do with your situation, if you're behind a shield, or a tree, or if you're surrounded by enemies, while a status modifier encapsulates your state, like if you're sick or you're really tired. The important thing about circumstance and status modifiers is that you only take the best circumstance bonus, the worst circumstance penalty, the best status bonus, and the worst status penalty and add those together. Meanwhile, a flat check is a d20 roll that you don't add any modifiers to. You can think of a flat check as just a percent chance. It's like an extra gate. Two of the most common conditions that use these mechanics are off guard and persistent damage. Off guard is extremely common and gives you a minus two circumstance penalty to AC. It might happen if you're getting attacked by something you don't know is there, or if you're surrounded by enemies. Persistent damage is damage that happens at the end of your turn every turn. For example, if you're poisoned or on fire, after you take the damage, you can make a DC 15 flat check to see if you recover. Circumstance penalties and a flat check. What about status penalty? Frightened always comes with a number, N. There are many conditions that always come with a number, and if you're frightened, you take a status penalty to everything. That includes AC, skill checks, attack rolls. You'll take a penalty of the magnitude N. However, at the end of your turn, that N will go down by one. So being frightened doesn't necessarily last very long. Because it's a status penalty, it stacks with off guard. If you already learned what frightened does, it's pretty easy to then know what sickened does. That's because sickened does the exact same thing. The only difference is that that N doesn't go down every turn. Instead, you have to spend an action to try to recover from being sickened, usually by re-rolling the saving throw that made you get sickened in the first place. You also can't ingest anything willingly, like a potion. Being prone just means you're lying down. If you're prone, you're off guard. That makes sense, meaning you take a minus two circumstance penalty to AC, and you also take a minus two circumstance penalty to attack rolls. When you're prone, the only movement you can do is crawling or standing up, which you probably could have figured out on your own. We can move on to the intermediate conditions. Once you understand visibility, you can apply the same concept to many different conditions. If something is partially visible, like in a cloud or behind some smoke, you'll have to pass a DC 5 flat check before you can even attempt your attack roll to try to hit it. Or if something is totally not visible, you'll have to pass a DC 10 flat check. If they attack you, you're also considered off guard. But the conditions work in reverse too. If you're blinded, then pretty much everyone is hidden from you, so you have to pass a DC 10 flat check in order to attack anything. Dazzled is just the lower version of blinded, but the same thing applies. Basically all targets are concealed from you. Being blinded also has some other penalties. All normal terrain is treated as difficult terrain. You can't see, so any perception checks that depend on vision, you automatically fail, and even perception checks that don't totally require vision, you also get a minus four status penalty to. If you're walking in difficult terrain, your movement costs twice as much. In addition to difficult terrain, there's also just a move speed penalty which might apply to you. Move speed penalty leads into being immobilized. Being immobilized is essentially a very extreme version of a move speed penalty. It means you can't take any move actions. If you want an even more extreme version of immobilized, then you become paralyzed. If you're paralyzed, you're completely unable to do anything. You're conscious, so you can think, but you can't move your head around or do anything like that, and you're off guard. If you're petrified, you literally have become a stone statue, and you
you even have stats like an object, just look it up if it ever becomes relevant. So this is the spectrum of movement reduction. Then there's two more conditions that include immobilized. Restrained is just the extreme version of grab, but it also includes if you're tied up. And don't think of them as being on this spectrum of immobilization. Think of them as just being a subset of being immobilized. In both cases, you're immobilized and off guard. And if you're grabbed, you need to make a DC5 flat check in order to use any manipulate action. That usually includes an interact action like drawing a weapon or casting any kind of spell. Whereas if you're restrained, you just can't use any manipulate or attack actions unless you're trying to escape from being restrained. There's four attribute penalty conditions, which have fancy names, but essentially just give you a penalty to that attribute. All three mental attributes are connected to stupefied, which gives you a penalty to all three and means you need to pass a DC5 flat check to cast a spell. If you're unconscious, we could simplify it with a simple unconscious state. You get a minus six to AC, a minus four to reflex saves, and you can only make non-visual perception checks, and even those you get a minus four penalty. Remember that being unconscious could also include just being asleep. Then we can move on to the advanced conditions. If you don't sleep, you become fatigued, meaning you take a minus one to AC in saving throws, and you can't do any exploration activities. If you're carrying too much stuff, you become encumbered and become clumsy one, and take a 10-foot move speed penalty. If you're quickened, you get an extra action, and if you're slowed, you get a certain number less actions per turn. If you're stunned, you must spend a certain number of actions to act or react again, possibly over multiple turns. If you're confused, it means you just attack or use offensive cantrips on random targets, including allies, and, and if you're fleeing, then you just have to spend all your actions to stride away. If you're controlled, then that just means something else is controlling your actions, so you could sit back, grab some pretzels, and enjoy the show as somebody else destroys your character and your party on your behalf. Doomed means that the dying value which you die is reduced by a certain number. If you're fascinated, you take a minus two status penalty to perception, and you can't use concentrate actions on anything except the object of your fascination. It ends on a hostile action against you. If you're deafened, you can only make non-auditory perception checks, and you still get a minus two penalty. You also have to pass a DC five flat check in order to perform auditory actions. You could compare this to the blinded condition. 